Hi there, and welcome to the Realm Architect tutorial. My name is Nils L. Nilsson Phillips, CEO and co-founder of Realm Architect, which is a company I started together with my co-founder Yannick and Silas, our marketing and community expert. Today, we'll show you how to use the tool to easily create more immersive world experiences for you and your players. And before we begin, let me remind you that everything you see before you today is part of our prototype and of course, far, far away removed from a finished product. So if you encounter any pesky bugs, do let us know so we can work those out towards later releases. And I also want to stress that uh, this was developed by a small team with <laughs> limited resources at the time so we could showcase our vision to the world. Now, some things in here aren't working the way we wanted to you, uh, and uh, others um, we didn't have time to finish. Now, that being said, you can try whatever we made today on itch.io. The link will be in the description below. Okay, let's dive into it. In this video, we're going to go through how you actually start build, uh, building your realm and make it ready for your first session, or perhaps all of the sessions down the line. So. If you open up the prototype, don't be alarmed if you see your second monitor open up with a similar screen. This is intentional, but it's also more of a showcase feature. The finished product will offer more flexible solutions for presenting information to your players, but let's ignore that for now and focus on your primary monitor. This is where you'll be interacting with the interface. Now, press new campaign. Give your campaign a cool title, add a thumbnail, and most importantly, the next part is very important. Choose your starter map. Now, what this means is the starter map is the top layer of all the maps that you'll be adding later and linking together. And we internally often refer to this as the overworld map. But for most campaigns, the way you should look at your overworld map is, or the starter map, is the most zoomed out way of looking at your own world, or better, realm, because we have plans to go into space with other TTRPGs with this, and we don't want to limit ourselves to just one world. However, in the current build, there is um, no way of changing this later on, so everything is tied to the top layer. The way Realm Architect wants you to prepare for your campaigns and do world building is the same way you would interact with, let's say, any single player role playing game out there. Part of our inspiration comes from great titles as. Pillars of Eternity 2, or Pathfinder Kingmaker, and Wrath of the Righteous. When you think of those games, you know there is an overworld map where your party is traveling from location to location, so let's say from a city to a dungeon, and then once you arrive at that location, you interact with the marker, you confirm you want to enter that location, and that will trigger a scene change, and a new map is loaded in. Well, Realm Architect works the exact same way, and it is actually extremely easy to do so. So... Let's press create, then I'll show you how to make that happen. So when loaded in, you'll see your starter map front and center and quite a bit of UI elements. Uh, the first thing I do while creating my realm is go to the uh, map icon on your right hand side and navigate to the lamp icon on the left side of the menu to turn the fog of war and time of day color off. The way you do it is by marking those checkboxes. These things make your map look a lot more dark than it's supposed to do. And it's just an added layer uh, of effect, so if that scared you previously, I'm sorry, we should have put this tutorial out a lot earlier. So that's more like it. All right, so looking at Lone Tree Village, that is inspiring me quite a bit. I do have the perfect map for that, so we're going to start there. Oh, okay, so let's press the center of five icons on the right-hand side in the UI, and this will open a menu that showcases all of the type of markers you can create and lists them on your left-hand side with filter options. So the reason they're there is as you're adding more and more markers to your world with different meanings and different effects, yeah, we wanted a way for you to sort them out. Now, the way you add them is the gray ones at the bottom of the menu, and uh, let's press the one with the door menu, the door and arrow. So click on that, and that will change your cursor. Now, to drop the marker on the map at the location you want, just click again. That will drop it. Let's add the map to it now. It's actually really easy. Click on the marker, and it will open another menu. It will say things like title, description, and what type of entrance it is. You can change those. 
It also shows us in the top right corner a giant red enter button and a choose image text in a box. Press the choose image text box and you will be able to browse your local files for the right map. Now I have the right one queued up right here. Let's add that to it. Once done, you'll see that the button turns green and we can enter. Click that now and it will change uh, scenes to the right new map. Look at this lovely village, man. So cozy, so idyllic. But looking at it, I have currently five types of buildings and I could potentially fill those if I have the inside locations of those maps with anything I wanted. But just as, uh, just as is the case in some source books, we don't need to fill every interior location. And for the purposes of this one shot I have in mind, let's create the tavern, which is kind of a cliche, I know, where all of our adventurers will meet and start their story. Now, all we have to do is repeat the same process, click the marker menu, add the scene change marker to your map, and click on the marker after placing it at the right map, and enter the new scene triggering the scene change. Well done! You have taken your first steps of building out your world. There's a ton more features to be explained in other videos, but now you know. See you then!